Hello there, welcome to another video in this Zero training series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add customers to Zero. If you've used the counting software in the past, then you'll know that generally there is an area of the software specifically for customers. It will be a customer module, a sales ledger module. Separately, you'll then have a purchase ledger module or supplier module. That is not the case with Zero. Everything, suppliers and customers, and everything to do with suppliers and customers comes under one module, which is contacts. If I click up here, I can filter my contacts between customers and suppliers, but the way we add and manage these customers and suppliers is all the same. They are contacts. And you'll see in this contact screen, I have all my contacts showing here. And these are both customers and suppliers. There are two columns here. What we owe, what the company owes these contacts, and what they owe us, or what they owe our company. By default, each contact can be a customer and a supplier. So we can raise sales invoices for 24 locks. We can also record invoices from them, supplier invoices for 24 locks. By default, each customer, each supplier, each contact is a contra contact. And if you understand accounting, if you know accounting terms, you understand what that means. Contra means we can do both sales and purchases within the same account, within the same contact, within the same customer supply. Okay, so how do we add a customer or contact to zero? We just go to all contacts up here and at the top right, we click on new contact and we just start filling out the details. So contact name, let's do printing supplies, LTD, account number. This isn't the nominal code, the nominal account. This is just an account reference for this contact or for this customer. So I'm going to do PRI001. The primary contact, let's put my name. This is the primary contact at this business. And that primary contact's email address, I'll put my email address info at bpfs-online.com. Feel free to email me. Additional people. So if we want more than one contact, we can click here and add further contacts. But one contact is generally enough, but there is the option to add more. We then have the business information, such as the phone number, website, and company registration number. Most people nowadays have more than one number. They have a landline and a mobile number. If you have multiple contacts, you're gonna have multiple phone numbers. So you can add new phone numbers here. So country code, area code, and then the phone number itself. Website, company registration number. At this point, we can click save and close, and this contact, which we're going to use as a customer, will be on the software. But there are these tabs to the left, which I strongly suggest you fill in. So addresses, you can enter a billing address and a delivery address. The address should come up automatically if the address is in your country of residence. If it's not in the, your country of residence or the address isn't showing, you can enter the, the addresses manually. Most contacts are just gonna have one address, which is going to be this billing address, especially seeing that this is accounting software. You generally only um, have correspondence with the finance department of your contact. But there is a delivery address option here. So if you do need to create like delivery notes, if there is a separate address that you need, then you do have two options here. One for a delivery address, one for the actual billing address. The billing address being where your sales invoice um, is going to go, what's going to show on the sales invoice you raise for this contact, for this customer. Financial details, this might be more important for suppliers rather than customers. But you can enter the banking details, 
of your customer or contact, the payment reference, their VAT number, sales tax number, and then their currency. So if you do have contacts, customers that you're not going to bill in pounds, perhaps you're going to bill them in dollars or euros, you can change that here. The defaults, it's really important that these defaults are set up because it will save you a lot of time in the future. So you can set up a default sales account. These are the nominal accounts that are on the software. If you've joined the series here, you don't know what I'm on about when I say nominal accounts, then go back and start this series from the beginning because that's what I cover in the first few videos of this course. Let's choose 4001 shop sales a that means whenever i raise an invoice for this customer by default the invoice will go to 4001 nominal account that can be changed when raising the invoice it's just a default to try and speed things up you can also set a default payment terms so if our payment terms for this customer are going to be 30 days after the invoice date if i set that up then by default, all invoices for this customer will be set with a due date at 30 days after the invoice date. Really important that you set these defaults up. There are other options here, which we'll come to at a later time in a later course. The only one to really mention is the credit limit. You can set credit limits for customers here. There are also purchase defaults. So if we are going to use this contact as a supplier as well as a customer once again we can add a default nominal code for recording supplier invoices nominal payment details and there are other options here too when i click save and close printing supplies is now on the software so if i go back to contacts all contacts and if we scroll down you'll see that here we have print and supplies info at bpfsonline.com phone number and the account reference there's nothing showing as owed either way with this contact because nothing's been entered yet that will come in future videos okay please like please subscribe and i'll speak to you in the next video